So let's go into resampling. So resampling, uh, basically, it's like if you have data that doesn't quite match, let's say if you have multiple data sets. Um, for example, if you collect data that's you know every month, um, like so you collected like you know the first of every month, but then you want to compare a data set that maybe collected every um, every week, so like every Friday. Well, they're going to have like four to five data points per month that you don't have, and you want to combine those together. It's like, well, you want to make sure that's kind of balanced out. So you can do things like either downsampling or upsampling. Um, note that there basically are a lot of ways you can do this. So I have a couple of resources here um, that are specific about resampling for time series um, for pandas. So note that this is actually built on, um, I think I did this twice, don't I? Did I just say this once? I can't tell what the two uh, rules are here. So you can see, here, okay, resampling here in time series. So there's a few functions you can do um, here. And it's linked directly to Pandas itself. Okay, so just kind of check that out as you go through. But the first one is downsampling. So downsampling, as you can probably guess, is basically going in the direction of like basically getting rid of samples. So we're resampling at a lower rate. Um, note that by downsampling, we're actually losing information. So essentially by downsampling, we're removing parts or we're simplifying. So we're going to lose some extra information, but it can be more computation efficient because we have less information, right? If you condense a whole year into one data point, right? You downsampled, down you lost a whole lot of information, but now it's going to be a lot easier to look at that one year, that one data point versus 365 data points in that one year. So you can imagine how that can be computationally efficient, right? So uh, kind of showing an example is that what we're going to do here, we're going to take our um, temperature, right? I'm going to resample for MS, right? So this basically represents for our monthly uh, mean and stuff like this. And note that that's why I linked over to this resample, so that there are different ways you can resample. So this will be a monthly, and then you can see the monthly dot mean. And we can see here, when we actually put this out, we can see is that we essentially will have our, did I do this right? Oh, it would help if I do this part. We go. You can see is that we have our monthly mean going here. So we can see we only have one data point per month, and it's just basically average from that full spectrum. So kind of looking at this part, you can see, oh, let's do this part. So you can see here is our monthly mean, and then let's look at just the temperature itself. You can see for the daily mean is that basically added up all this for January, and that would give us this mean right here. So we've simplified the one, but we're losing information to so just kind of be aware of that. But it can be computationally efficient where like you only have to care about one data points. Um, this might be important if you're looking at something like over 100 years. You might not care about every single day the data was recorded. You might look at just the monthly mean or even the weekly mean or possibly even the yearly mean. Okay, cool. So that is downsampling. Okay. Any questions on um, the concept of downsampling? Hopefully that's pretty straightforward. You're basically just making less samples. Okay, so anyone got to guess what the opposite of up, um, downsampling is? Upsampling, right? So what we're going to do here, essentially, is we're going to create more data. Okay, so what we're going to do, basically, you might say this is resampling at a higher rate. Um, basically, this is when like you want to make sure you keep all the information that you have. So this might be in the case, like, if you have two data sets, one that has, like, let's say, a monthly data set, and one has, like, a weekly data set, um, you might, in the sense, like, want to keep the weekly one, so you upsample the monthly one. So it um, sam resamples at a higher rate. So that means that we have an, our monthly data turns into a weekly data set. Downsampling is the opposite, where essentially we have our monthly data and our weekly data, and we want to downsample so this becomes a monthly amount of data instead of weekly. Okay, so we lose information, but makes it a little more efficient since that we don't have as much data. Okay, so upsampling, um, what you might do here is that you'd resample along um, a period of time that you don't have. So you can hear, um, sorry, not talking right, uh, data to every 12 hours, but only fill the parts known blank otherwise. So basically, is that we're going to uh, make a frequency of every 12 hours, which remember, this was only daily data. So you can see here is that each value is just going to be no data here, since we don't have the data. And you can see the default here is going to be uh, 12 midnight, right? Which might not be accurate, right? So you kind of be aware of that, you know, what you're doing here. But then once we have this data point, it's like, well, we can't just merge. I mean, we could technically, but you don't want to just use this merge because we're upsampling, right? So you want to fill in this data point so we can actually fill it in. And note that this F fill here is going to fill it in from the previous time, right? So this 20.7 is going to fill into this part right here. And you can see here that way you're upsampling up. You're not gaining any new information, right? But you're keeping all the information you had before. 
right? If you had something extreme, for example, it's like, okay, we have some data set that has an hour hourly data set versus a daily data set, and you want to combine those together, you might resample on the hour itself and then fill it forward. So you can see here on that case, you can see is that that 20.7 might go for every hour until we hit the next day. Okay, and this will at least allow you to combine those data sets and use that that way. Um, again, in certain situations, this makes sense. In certain situations, this probably would be a bad idea, but you have to decide in, depending on the context. Okay, cool. So that is all of resampling, um, and as well as some visualizations for time series. Um, do you guys have any questions on any of those aspects? Okay, yeah, so this has mostly been kind of like playing around with data, right? Either reading in time series, visualizing time series, and resampling, right? So those are different parts. So this is going to lead us next into um, looking at trends, and that will be really important for models.